play. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's uh, for my brain. That's super easy to understand. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Oh. I don't know what that's. Well, it's got to be better than the text, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Way better than the text. Um, this is all of our audio network and video cabling, correct? Yeah, anything that's not high voltage, so, you know. So not power, basically. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'll be the scribe. All right, Bill. Yeah. Do you mind pulling? We'll just go, like, try and, try and get it against the, the wall. You know, because if we use the cable type, then uh, it's more accurate. I only use <laughs> yeah. good cables. Only the body cables to measure You're with. You're the one that taught me that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're going all the way back, huh? What? Does this, this cabinet move easy? Is it heavy? Uh, it it's easy? not not heavy. Yeah. Probably. So if we think, like, right there. So yeah. Heavy. And then it's... That's it. This should be enough, enough slack to be... Yeah. Even at the top of the rack out, the only question is if we're going to have it dressed in a cable management, those racks have like some cable management guys that'll loop it back a little bit more. It feels like it's enough. Okay, we got to talk about studio again. So since the last video I made down here, not much progress has happened. There's been some important things though. Uh, we've gotten all of the HVAC system figured out and planned. We've gotten the electrical system figured out and planned. And we've gotten all of the measurements done for the low voltage cabling that needs to go in on the walls. And that's all important stuff that needed to happen. Problem is it's gonna be a little while till I can knock those big things out and I can't make any more progress on the studio until we finish things like the HVAC and the electrical and the low voltage. Now, if you've been following this project, you know that this is not at all how I wanted it to go. This, this has been a huge struggle. It's over budget, over schedule. I can't really come down here much because it's a big point of stress for me. And as you can see, we've sort of neglected it and turned it into just sort of general storage for crap that we don't have room for upstairs. But that's all gonna change today. So I've been kicking around this idea for the past couple of weeks that I really should have done sooner. The basic elements of a recording space are here. We have the space, we have power, and upstairs I have a control room full of recording gear, a basically fully set up recording studio. Now I have a ton of ideas for projects that I want to do for this YouTube channel and outside of YouTube that I've been waiting on. Like I need the studio to be done. The space needs to be perfect before I can get to work on this. And the reality is that's not true. So we're gonna start working down here now. So here's the plan. In a little over a week, my band Noah Guthrie and Good Trouble are gonna come down here to record. And we're gonna spend about three or four days working on some new music. We're gonna record it down here, we're gonna mix it here, and we're gonna get it ready for a release. In fact, if you're watching this video, the single is already out. It's on Spotify, and there's a performance video of us actually tracking it here in the studio, all linked down below. But before we get to that point, Philip, Conrad, and I need to get this space ready to go. So step one is we gotta clear it all out. We gotta get rid of all these boxes. We gotta move these tools out of here. We gotta sweep up and just get the space generally ready to record in. All right, so we've got the space nice and cleaned up now. Um, and actually, this is my first time seeing the space completely open with nothing in it. Every other time, there's always been people down here and tools and stuff everywhere. This is literally the first time seeing just basically the empty live room. And it's, it's pretty sizable. We're gonna be able to do a lot of stuff down here. But as we started to clean the space out, we noticed it got a lot more live. So we're gonna go ahead and complete a step that we were gonna do later, which is insulating these back walls with rock wool. So these walls will be absorption. Uh, they won't reflect sound. And actually it's kind of cool because we should get sort of a preview of what the room is gonna sound like. Obviously uh, it's only, you know, partially there, but the back section being soft and this other section being more live, we should get a good feel for the room. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. You ever done insulation before? No. It's pretty easy. Uh, 
I've built base traps before, but I've never actually done it in walls. It's kind of the same thing. Nice. Okay, check this out. Hi. Hi. This stuff works. So, let's see the live room. Cool. Um, so for the time being, this is where we're gonna be doing all the filming and all the work. But when the studio's done, this is the control room. Cool. Uh, here, but sure. Console here. Um, this is gonna be the rack. Is there anything in this room where it's like, cool, we have to put guitar stuff here? No. For any, okay. No. So it's the kind of like a blank open. slate. Yeah. Okay, cool. Frame somebody or something, and it's like, you get to yeah. do the frame within a frame thing, which is always... Right, yeah. and it kind of tells the story, because it's like you're in the control room, you're the perspective of where it's going to be coming from. It frames it nicely with the actual frame. You, that helps feel like, oh, it's an unfinished studio space, but then also you see yeah. a musician in the foreground and a musician in the background, so it's like three layers. I think it's easy with this type of situation. Like, there's tons of lights. Like, Aperture has some these flat, flexible LED panels. It's like a built-in softbox, like plus grid mm -hmm. thing. And basically what you can do is you can get a really soft light that's really controlled and dimmable. Right. And it's only in like a three or four inch like footprint. For example, you could have a few of those placed throughout the space. Okay. And they would kind of mostly hide in the ceiling. It's like you could create a nice little soft pocket of light over the drums. Okay. And then you could do that like kind of where all your key spots are. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you could play with the hard lighting as kind of like the accent. The vibe that I want down here is that this is not a perfect space, but we're making it work. But I also want it to look good, and I want this, the stuff that we do down here to be visually appealing. So right. we need to kind of have a compromise. Like, yeah. I can't complete the studio right mm -hmm. now, but it's in a place where we can start working. So, you know. happy with the way this came out seeing it in person like I could envision it but now actually seeing it it's really really cool and vibey down here today we're finishing up the lighting setup we've got two different lighting elements that are gonna happen in here one is the actual like video setup which is the system that Grayson spec'd out for us second is this like stylized hanging bulb thing which Phil is setting up right now and he will take you through it but I love this man this is going to be awesome. Can't wait to start using it. So we have four zones of light. So these aren't placed yet, but hopefully we'll have 12 orbs of light floating around all of the musicians as they perform. So we're going to kind of spread these around and then each one of these dimmers that Phil has installed will be for a specific zone and we'll label them as like guitar, bass, drums, vocals and we can like dial them in to the level that we need. And then that combined with our actual video lights will be killer. I wonder if we do two inch strip of gaff uh, on the very front of that one, the light that it's putting off, but it would help the camera not see the diffusion. So just like a little skirt. Yeah. All right, what do you think, man? I mean, I think it's pretty close to dialed. We're going to have a little bit of haze coming in here in a second. And that, I think, is going to be the finishing touch. Yeah, the haze is... Instant vibes, right? Yeah. Now you can see that hard beam from the kicker. I'll go back down to, like, show ISO here. Yeah, dude. Yep. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah. Fan Holy this out shit. A bit, then make it all dude. smooth and even. That looks so good. Uh, yeah, it's a little different, bro. <laughs> this looks great. Whoa! Oh my gosh. It's so much better. <laughs> it's like... It's much better. It's, yeah. Much, much better. Holy so... Crap.
Come here, fire rain. Come here, fire rain. I'm gonna be there. Okay, so that version kind of cleans up the. It's never really clean, okay. but it distorts less when you go into that lower register. Uh -huh. This version, stand by, do that same thing. Come here, fire rain. Come here, fire rain. I'm gonna be there. I mean, I like that personally. I uh, like it too. Yeah, That's it gives a little bit of texture with it. I'm just hitting the dog piss yeah. out of this great river. And I'm walking away. I'm leaving the stage. I've also switched the placement of the of the first uh those lyrics are going to be after this because it'll make more sense but this is when you're jaded and tired and you're and you're like you now can't do anything else but you're not you don't love what you do right now but the problem is is the verse the lines are short so you got to somehow pick like four or five words that say that you could do like you know and the light starts to fade Good night I'm picturing like, you know, you're done with the show yep. And I'm walking away Or you like, and I'm leaving the stage Goodbye That could be cool to do some Yeah, like a background vocals mm -hmm. there and then I was gonna switch it to where the lyrics are. Uh, I'm losing sleep. I'm feeling nervous. I'm because it makes more sense. Like after you've been on the road forever yeah. and ever, you just feel like you're going fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. So like, losing sleep and feeling nervous. I'm hearing songs. Oh God, I'm hearing voices. Yeah. I think it makes more sense. You know, I don't want to be like. I don't want people to just hear us as like, well, you, you, you get to play music for a living. What do you mean? Well, it's not, you know. Oh, I, know. I also barely sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm stepping away. <laughs> Goodbye. You know what I mean? Yeah. So something like that. I like slipping away. Slipping away. Slipping away is better. Or drifting away. It's almost, it's, it's intentional, but it's also not intentional, maybe. It's like gonna happen. Slipping. Slipping sounds like I'm losing my grip. Yeah. yeah. And also on that vocal run, I really wanna try stacking some vocals that yeah. come in that yeah. have some cool yeah, body. So I'll just, I'll just I'll just stay on like a, yeah. I think it's something like that, really. Like, you know, you do that, and then this guitar sounds like, like a big kind of organ sound. It's like, yes, yeah. So I'll literally just slip in away. Goodbye. That'd be fucking sick. That could we could 
could try it a couple different ways. That could be cool. Some. I'm losing sleep and feeling nervous. I swear to God, I'm hearing voices. A funny thing, the universe is. I'm speaking in tongues and shouting curses. And all I want it to be. Was a rock star. Try that right there. Let me get you in right here. Okay. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to try and do a filter sweep and uh, automate the tremolo on the, my board at the same time. the difference between heavy and dirty heavy okay yeah this part this part needs to be heavy not dirty it doesn't need a bunch of distortion it actually needs to be pretty clean it just needs to be like heavy you know what i mean heavy heavy bike <laughs> this is heavy bike <laughs>
I kept your picture Should've known better I kept your picture Should've known better Oh yeah Ooh. Ooh. Make it better